This lightning talk is inspired by Kate Gregory's talk, Naming is Hard. I hope you all watched it. Um, if not, she talks about a thing that we all have in common, which is finding good names for like everything that we do. This is a skill that can be learned and a good starting point is Kate's talks. I will venture into one specific naming issue that we run into my company a lot. I work for Rosen. We inspect oil and gas pipelines, like real physical pipelines. And we are looking for defects in the pipelines, like dents and cracks and corrosion. We also need to calculate where the defect actually is in the pipeline so that the pipeline vendor knows where to dig. And to do that, the inspection tool collects a lot of data. The amount of data depends on the pipeline length, on the diameter, the amount of sensors, the type of sensor, sampling frequency, and so on. This can lead to a lot of data, um, sometimes terabyte for one inspection. It's not um, big data, let's say, but it's a large amount of data. And we do a lot of calculations on that data. And by the way, an issue in the pipeline is called feature. So we implement feature searches for that. Um, to do these calculations efficiently, we use the pipes and filters pattern. And pipes and filters is useful when you have data that can be read in chunks, and then also the calculation can be split into different um, calculations that can be run individually. So instead of a monolithic program that does all at once, um, we have a program that is split into multiple calculations, and these calculations are called filters. So now the data can be processed in parallel by reading in data chunk one. When this read-in is finished, we move chunk one over to filter one, it gets calculated, and while it gets calculated, the, ch the second chunk is read in. And this is a form of parallelization. So we do this until we finish, and we write everything. And, um, yeah, and the speed of the whole thing is determined by the slowest filter. But now we have a problem. So because we work with real-world pipelines, and this is called pipes and filters, so this can be confusing. And we cannot rename the real-world pipelines, so we renamed this thing chain in our code, only in our code. So no one outside of the code base and you now knows what the chain is. But can we find more range, uh, more pipes? Sure, we can. This is a pipe operator, and this entire thing is a pipeline. We also have um, data flow pipelines, compiler pipelines, graphic rendering pipeline, build pipeline, media processing pipeline, multi-threaded pipeline, unit pipeline, and probably many, many, many more. But I want to go to one last pipeline. And um, this is what we use. Um, we, are, we have this pipes and filters thing built into a service. And um, to communicate within the service or to the service, we use uh, named pipes. And um, so there you have another pipe. And if something goes wrong in the calculation and the connection um, to the pipe um, or to the service closes unexpectedly, we get the most alarming error message that you can have when inspecting a real-world pipeline, trying to figure out if it's broken. And that's, <laughs> the pipe is broken. That's the actual error message that we got before we caught that. So naming is really hard. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>